Hello, everybody. So uh, it turns out that uh, a lot of you are struggling with the proxy. Um, either you don't have a VM, don't know how to set up a VM, or don't have another computer, or you're just confused by the entire process. I um, thought I would make a quick video showing an alternative that many of you are opting for, and it's not a bad alternative at all. Um, so a proxy is another machine that will intercept traffic, right? And in this case, it intercepts it, it, uh, it translates it, and it displays it for you. And it allows us technically the ability to send commands to the server, to the client, as well as receiving them in between. Now, it didn't turn out that uh, I didn't really need to send anything through the proxy to complete any of the challenges. So it's not strictly necessary if you don't want to or don't know how to do it. It is possible to set up a proxy on a single machine. It's a local proxy. Uh, it's not as easy to do, and so I didn't even set it up as an option for all of you. But since we don't need to actually proxy anything, we just need to um, inspect those packets as they come to and from our client, because um, that's the only thing I, I used it for, is to see what was going on in the game. We actually only need a network sniffer, which we can very easily run from a single machine. Um, there is a very popular such program called Wireshark, which you see here in the background. I am currently in the game, and it is currently collecting packets to and from. Uh, now, in order to set this up, however, um, I mean, I used Wireshark in my original videos. Um, it's, you know, you can see the information flying back and forth. The problem is the parsing part of it. You know, you can't just look at it and see what's going on. You need to be able to shoot it out in some user-readable format. So I sent a link to a couple of you for a Wireshark parser that somebody put together, actually for Pwn Adventure 3. Super, I didn't even know it existed. I just did a search when a student asked for it, and there it was. So um, super great that it was out there and we were able to find it. What I did is I took the uh, script from that blog post, and I'm going to go ahead and put this up on Canvas for you all. Um, but here it is, uh, already all set to go. If you want to use it, all you need to do is save this file and drop it into your Wireshark plugins directory, of course, after you download and install Wireshark. Um, if it's in your plugins directory, then it will automatically load the next time Wireshark opens, or you can go to Analyze and Reload Lua plugins. So you just drop this into... Plugins folder, which in my case is Program Files Wireshark Plugins. Just drop her in there, and it is ready to go. Um, requires a little bit more setup after that in order to make use of it, but it does all the parsing for you. I've been playing around with it a little bit. Uh, as you can see here, I have a filter on in Wireshark. It's Wireshark's gonna, it's a, it's a network sniffer. It's gonna sniff anything coming to or from the network adapter that you identify. You need to filter that down. So I have a filter up here at the top that just says, only show me information if it's from my machine to the game server or the master server, or from the master server or the game server to my machine. That's all that filter is, very simple. Once we have that, uh, you can start adding columns that contain the information that the parser script, the plugin, uh, is, is kicking out for you. So here I have created a column just to ver ver verify uh, that the uh, Pwn protocol is present. And I only did that because I just I wanted to eliminate any noise that might have been in there. The other thing that you can see here that I've already added is my exposition. <laughs> exposition. <laughs> uh, anyway, I want to set up another column for the Y and the Z position so I can see where I currently am. Very easy to do. If you select one of uh, the entries here, or the packet that has our current information, and you expand out the Pwn Adventure 3 Game Server Protocol tab, you can see this one contains an update location field, uh, which contains an X, Y, and Z coordinate. It also contains a direction coordinate for the roll pitch and yaw, which I didn't use for anything, but it's nice that it's there, I guess. Um, whether or not you are currently moving, and whether or not you are currently strafing, so moving side to side. I really only care about the X, Y, and Z coordinate. That's all I really needed to complete the challenges for myself, and that's all you should need to complete the challenges as well. 
all we have to do is right click that and say um, apply as a column it adds you can't see it. i gotta bring it over here. it adds that column here for us which i have to scroll all the way over in order to be able to see it is uh, you can see it's already there and in number format if i want to change it i can just right click and uh edit oops edit column and there we go now let's add our z position as a column now we got our z position here as well very very handy well what else do we have this parser script if you look at it it does a bunch of stuff this might be even more comprehensive than the proxy script that i offered you guys um it's uh so uh quest stages uh pvp state achievements enemy position you yeah, so on and so forth tons of stuff let's see what else we've got um so this i can see has the uh phone uh, but this is an unknown so even the parse script doesn't know what to do with that um let's use some mana and see those entries if you're at the very bottom it will live scroll for you if you are not at the bottom it will actually stop at that location so all right let's go back here uh and i'm going to move the game client so you can see what's going on that's good enough all right so if i fire out some uh, fireballs you can see that we have new position uh, information updating here that's not us that is the position of our fireball and we also have some other new information coming in Shrink this down all right unknown known Here where I was shooting the fireballs. Huh? So here's an update location. This is for our fireball. Doesn't look like you can parse the it parses the location okay, but you can see the location is a, a little bit different than our player position. But you know, so be it. Um well not seeing the protocol for mana regen, which is a little strange, but that's okay. We don't need to be able to see it in order to get it so what we can do is we can just right click here let's add let's add an info column drag it over here on the other side of our z position it's being real weird for some reason on all right but i don't know what's going to cause that big of a problem i wouldn't have done it Come on. All right. I'm going to right click on our info column and edit column. Um, oh, and we can see I've already done it for the info column. I'm going to change the name to mana and like custom is fine. And we can just enter in the fields any of the attributes on the Poon 3 protocol that we like, right? So we've got, we can even see uh, our, our current running uh, disposition. We've got sort of TID, uh, position XYZ, opcode, move, mana, health, gate, which I'm not really sure what it does. If I select mana, yeah, that one should be able to see that at least. You use up some of that mana. And there it is. So that's our current mana right there updating real time. Sniffer. Let's add one for now you see it's not displaying my current mana like all the time because the game isn't sending that packet update all the time apparently the game only sends a packet for our mana update when we use mana when it's going down or going up when it's changing but you can see our position keeps rolling on along with whatever that unknown thing is 
um, it just keeps rolling on and rolling on. So our position is continually being checked. Our mana is not. I'm going to go up a little bit here. I'm going to look into this unknown. I don't know what this is. These are the... Uh, these are the... Um, Add arrival time. Let's edit arrival time. This will be unknown. Actually, let's do draw on that one. And it will be three unknown. We do this. We see it's just this. But I don't want to display the, the hex translation. Let's see, can I change this to what happens if I just change it to number? That's not uh, not the kind of translation I was looking for. Protocol. I'm Nah, no, it's just the point there. Just the raw display. Packet protocol relative time source address. So that. Apparently not. Well, in any event, um. I just wanted to quick show um, how you could use Wireshark to accomplish essentially the same sort of things that we were doing with the proxy. Um, since, actually, let me change raw here to health, and then I bet it uh, will also parse the health updates for mobs. So you could use it for the Magma Rock chain. Let's move this uh, over here by mana. And I'm going to go back to the game and find me something to back in because I'm in the middle of nowhere. I actually don't have my, uh, my parser currently running at all. Oh, why is it now? Oh, because I'm. Oh, because I'm way up here now. Live feed. All right, so we got health here. Man is over here. Find something to kill because I bet it will show their current hit points. Oh, there's a giant. Yes, it did show something. Doesn't look like, yeah, it's some, some weird value though. Let's, uh, let's come and custom, let's. What are you? You are custom. Any position. I'm going to tweak the parser a little bit because this is obviously not the, the amount. Oh, that's right. When they die, the value changes to something weird. Yeah, there we go. That's right. Yeah, when they die, uh, yeah, it's really bizarre. Something strange happens. But there we go. Yeah, five health. That seems like it makes more sense. Okay. 
So yeah, it could be used also for the, the Magma Rock channel. That isn't too much of a problem. That's it. I just wanted to show you that real quick. I will share the Lua script with, uh, with you up on Canvas if you need to use it. It should be ready to go out of the box. Uh, I didn't make any changes to this that I can recall. I did do some futzing with Wireshark just to get the display that I need, but I showed you how to do that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to have another way to do this, I guess, right? Okay. Good luck. See you next time.